Hey everyone, this is Todd, the Cybertruck Truck Guy, and today we're going to be talking about the Tesla truck bed, or as they call it, the vault. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the 13 specific features that I think set it apart from all the other truck beds that are out there today. I'm also going to be spending some time explaining why the features are so important to truck people like me. And lastly, I'm going to be covering one mystery about the truck bed that might be a little controversial. I'm only going to be covering actual features on the bed itself. I'm not going to be talking about all the potential accessories that there might be, like the camper or the solar panel. So I want to apologize on the front end. This is really going to be a long video. The bed is just so awesome and so revolutionary that it just takes a little time to go through all the features and explain why they're so important. That said, for those of you that are impatient, I did put a timeline in the comments with each of the features listed so that if you want to jump around, you can. Now in order to talk about the first feature that I want to go through, we're going to take a little field trip to our shop. We're going to look at what real truck beds look like when they're used in the real world on a daily basis and they're exposed to the de-icing agents that we have here in the American Midwest and North. Okay, let's go. Our truck number three. Notice, got to scrape the paint off on the side there. Look at the bed. Look at my truck bed. Rusted, paint chipping off, dinged up like crazy. Still on truck number three here. Notice my bumper. That's been backed into. See the zip tie holding my bumper on? These are trucks that are they're just a few years old. Okay, this is truck number 14. Check out my rear quarter panel, bumper, issues there, Put the door there. Truck is this, truck number five. I already have rust pitting forming on there. Jack, jacked up the door there. have lots of small damage on this side of it. This is truck number eight. Ding there, gouge there, ding there. Another quarter panel folded in. Another dings on the back door, the gate. Uh, chips stings, scratches. Uh, I have corrosion on all these too. I mean, let's see. This one's probably five years old, four years old. This is truck four. So not all my trucks are pickup trucks. I've got other trucks, that's why I have different numbers. So look, I already have rust forming on there. So I think the all my pickups except for my 550 are 2016 or newer. Kinda damaged door there, or gate there, damage there. Ding, ding, ding. Again, corrosion already forming up underneath the bed. It's not a Ford thing, it's not a GM thing. It's a steel truck with paint thing. Um, basically, you're gonna destroy your bed if you use it for work or you use it for hard use in a truck, or if you operate up in the north somewhere north of kansas city where we use rock salt in the winter all right welcome back it's time to get on with our list of 13 features feature number one the stainless steel truck bed okay when i started out writing this i wrote a long paragraph about why the stainless steel truck bed was so important but then i decided i was just going to go show you all the problems that i have with regular truck beds and i think honestly kind of speak for itself it's not going to rust. It's not going to be subject to all the damage that my other beds normally are subject to. So it's brilliant. It's revolutionary. Feature number two, no wheel wells. I hate wheel wells in the back of pickup trucks. They get in the way. When you're trying to load it up, you're trying to stuff things in the 
crevices that are created by the wheel wells. And when you're trying to unload it with bulk materials, you're always trying to clean out around the wheel wells because it prevents you from getting that material out cleanly. If you want to use your pickup truck bed as any kind of a sleeping or camping platform, you have to buy a custom mattress that actually goes around the wheel wells or you just end up losing that space or objects fall down into that space. It's a real pain in the butt. In fact, it's one of the reasons why a lot of commercial trucks opt to have flatbeds so they don't have to contend with those wheel wells. The Cybertruck starts with a convenient symmetrical platform and it just avoids the fuss and muss of dealing with those intrusive wheel wells. Feature number three, the Cybertruck bed can actually hold up to 3,500 pounds of cargo. Now I know you're thinking, well, that's not really a feature of the bed. It's more like a feature of the whole truck, but it actually is. Let me give you an example. My Toyota Tacoma can only hold about 600 pounds of cargo in the bed. And if I try and put more in, it actually causes the bed to compress into the suspension stops. How do I know that? Because last year I tried to take my motorcycle uh, on a trip with my Tacoma and I couldn't do it. I had That's where I ended up having to use my wife's Tundra. Having a bed that can hold 3,500 pounds means it's almost impossible to overload it. When you have an overloader bed, not only can you actually cause serious damage to your suspension, but it totally changes the way that the truck handles, making it dangerous and illegal. That basically means that you can stuff the Cybertruck bed to the gills and still have a safe, legal, and easy truck to drive. Feature number four, secret storage compartments. It's got storage compartments under the bed and in those side sail areas. And storage compartments are really nice for four reasons. The first is that it makes clever use of space that would other, otherwise be wasted. The second is that it actually gives you extra security if you have high value items that you wanna keep out of visibility. Thirdly, it gives you a place to put all the little things that you like to carry around with you in a truck like cargo straps and bungee cords and important tools, but it lets you keep them in an out of the way place that isn't messy in the cab or irritating to have in the bed. The last thing is secret storage compartments. They're cool. I like them. I always have since I was a little kid and I think they're fun now. Feature number five, a retractable integrated ramp. So I've mentioned it before, but the current ramp that I have to use and most people have to use that want to load motorcycles or ATVs into the beds of their trucks are these janky aluminum or steel ramps. And not only are they uncomfortable to use, they can actually be kind of dangerous. So the other thing is that when I'm traveling with the ramps, they take up a bunch of space in my bed. And I only end up using them for a few minutes at a time. Lastly, I actually have to worry about those ramps getting lost or stolen. If that happens, basically, I'm stuck with my motorcycle either on the ground or in my bed. Same thing with people that use it for ATVs. If you want to get the nice stowable ramps that are available from Ford, for instance, it costs you $800 and it actually takes up a bunch of space on the interior of the cab. Now for someone like me, ramps are essential, but think about the things that you could use them for if they were available and out of the way. You could use them if you ever needed to move a large appliance. It makes it easier if you ever have to roll up a heavy cooler or bring a generator or other heavy tools with you to a job site. What if you have somebody that needs to use a portable mobility device because they're elderly or they have a disability? You can actually roll it back up in the back of your truck and help people that would otherwise not be able to travel around get around some more. The bottom line is that an integrated ramp that just comes in and out along with a bed that actually makes it easier to load is a serious advantage and a game changer for people with trucks. Feature number six, it has an integrated L-Track cargo management system. So along the side of the bed rail, it has these L-Track mounts. L-Track systems are the industry standard for light to medium weight cargo management systems. They're commonly used to store things like motorcycles, ATVs, riding lawnmowers, or small tractors. Basically, an integrated L-Track system makes it so that if you need to tie something down or secure something in the bed, 
it's super easy to do it. Feature number seven, partial cab access. Okay, this is a feature we don't fully know about, but we do have confirmation from two separate sources, the most important of which is from Elon Musk himself. Initially, there was a post that came from Tesla, Teslarati right after the reveal that was titled, Top 10 Cybertruck Hidden Features You May Have Missed, where the article said, quote, the Cybertruck has a large center armrest that looks to double as support for extra long cargo. Then later on, on December 17th, Elon Musk had a small tweet exchange where he indicated that there would be partial cab access, seemingly confirming the initial report by Teslarati. As it stands, I don't know of a single pickup truck out there that has partial cab access that isn't just through a cargo, through a window, a uh, rear, rear facing window. The difference here is we're talking about an access pass through that's actually level with the truck bed. And that's a real game changer because not only does it allow for extra long cargo, like long uh, lumber to be put in the back of the bed, but it also allows for pets or even nimble humans to go from the bed to the cab and back again. Not only would this make trips with pets far more enjoyable and comfortable for probably everyone involved, but it would also allow for extra storage or living space when you're using the Cybertruck bed as a mini camper or RV. On a little aside, I can also say that I think if you were in a situation where you had a grizzly bear outside your camper, just about anyone would figure out a way to slide through that access hole so they could get the heck out of Dodge. Feature eight, an available air compressor valve in the bed. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the advantages that you have when you have an onboard air compressor because there's literally dozens of advantages that you can use, but I'm gonna mention two. The first is, easily filling up an air mattress. The second thing is it's useful for off-roading because it's very popular in the off-roading community to actually air down tires so that they get better traction in real loose or muddy situations or sand, and then they wanna air the tires back up. And on the side, if you wanna have a professionally, a professionally installed auxiliary air system put into your truck, it usually costs about 500 bucks. Feature number nine, the stargazer window. Now, I realize it's only about six or eight inches where the window actually extends in the back of the bed, but that's enough space where if your head is laying down, you can see the stars. One of the reasons I like to tent camp is the ability to see the stars. One of the problems with that is if you get a 2 a.m. rain squall, it's an exciting situation. You'll get woke up and have to run around and try and put your rain fly up so you don't get soaked and all your gear gets soaked. The advantage of the stargazer window is you get all the enjoyment of being able to watch the stars, but all the convenience of not having to worry about getting rained on. Feature number 10, interior bed lighting. Okay, other truck beds have lights, but they're very utilitarian. They're usually just a couple of LEDs up at the top of the cab that shine down in the bed. The integrated lights on the bed interior actually show a degree of thoughtfulness and sophistication about using the Cybertruck as a temporary living space when you're camping. They're very nice, very stylish, and they really enhance the ambiance of using the bed. The other thing is that they provide light from both directions. One of the frustrating things when you're trying to look for something at night in a truck bed and you only have one source of light is that there's a lot of shadows getting cast back there and you can't really find things. The fact that they have lights coming up both directions from inside the bed means that you should be able to find things much easier when you need to find them after the sun goes down. Feature number 11, environmental control inside the bed. I gotta tell you that this was a feature that was so far off my radar, I wouldn't have even thought about asking for it. When this feature was initially confirmed via, via that same tweet exchange that confirmed the pass-through, I was surprised, puzzled, but subsequently, it's become obvious that Elon Musk and Tesla have a real fixation with HVAC systems. In fact, they've even talked about maybe doing their own HVAC systems for houses. And then additionally, when the Octovalve came up and Sandy Monroe and Elon Musk talked about it, it became obvious that there's things that the Octovalve can do in order to control hot and cold temperatures 
that really no one else has the ability to do. So we're talking potentially about the ability not only to have the bed heated and cooled, but also to have clean air circulated using the um, HEPA air filtration system that the car has available to it. This is going to absolutely revolutionize being able to use the truck bed as a sleeping or camping environment. The ability to camp conveniently in extreme weather is going to be like giving an outdoor passport to a bunch of people that haven't been able to actually go outdoors or camp outdoors in those kind of environments historically because either can't afford a camper or they don't have anywhere else to store it. The other thing is that I don't even know if campers have HEPA air filtration. So I think this is going to be a wonderful blessing for people that have allergies. It's actually going to give them while they sleep in the cab a break to give their sinuses a chance to recover. It's not an understatement to say that Tesla is providing for free a micro RV to anybody that buys the Cybertruck. Feature number 12, power outlets in the bed that were connected to grid level type energy capacity. The ability to send power to tools or appliances or even other electric vehicles puts the Cybertruck on just another level. I mean, historically, in order to do this, you needed both a large generator and you needed cans of gas. Not only was this expensive, but it took up all kinds of space in the bed. And you also had to deal with the odor of the gas itself being in the bed. Then additionally, even if you had the generator and you had the gas, you had to actually deal with the noise. And in some places, in some cases, you're not even allowed to run a generator at night. So the whole point of bringing it actually gets thrown out the window. I mean, this, this makes it so that the Cybertruck can be set up from anything for a luxurious mini camper to the ultimate party vehicle to one of the most amazingly versatile workhorses. Personally, for me, the ability to provide a mini fridge and a small camp oven means that I don't have to leave my enjoyment of home cooking or cold beer at home when I go out into the backcountry. Quiet, portable, grid level energy is gonna totally change the way we use our vehicles for both work and play. My favorite feature, and since I'm making the video, I get to choose what my favorite feature is, is the rolling integrated tonneau cover. So as a truck person, let me explain why the rolling integrated tonneau cover is so important by actually explaining what the options were and what the limitations were prior to the Cybertruck. So basically, if you wanted to have an enclosed bed, you really had two ways of doing it. You could do it with a rolling retractable tonneau cover. So if you got one that was just like the Cybertrucks where it was rolling retractable, to have one of those to purchase and have one installed, they're about $2,500. The other problem is you can't use it as a camper. The tonneau cover is so close to where you would actually be sleeping, you'd be, it's like you're in a coffin. So it works good, but it is it has limitations and it is expensive. So option number two is something called a truck topper or a truck cap. That's basically a fiberglass shell that sits up over the top of your bed. So these do give you more secure space than using a tonneau cover, and you can actually use it as a camper because there's that more space makes it so you can get ventilation and you don't feel like you're in a coffin. The problem with those is two things. You limit being able to put large things in. Specifically for me, I can't put my motorcycle on the bed of a truck. People with ATVs or other large things that they want to put in there, they can't get them in there. In my business, oftentimes we want to go pick up pallets and materials. A pallet won't generally fit in a vehicle with a truck topper. And the other thing is that if you want to get bulk materials, they're usually loaded with like a, a bobcat or a skid steer machine where they drop it over the side. You can't do that having a truck topper on. So basically, either way you wanted to go to have secure storage meant you had to make some big compromises on what you were ultimately able to do with the truck itself. And in both cases, it cost a substantial amount of money. So the brilliance of the Cybertruck tonneau cover is that it actually gives you the benefits of both things, the rolling tonneau cover and a truck cap. But it also has some things on top of it. It's so strong 
that you can actually stand on it or walk on it. And that's going to make it probably conducive for putting additional rack systems on top of the Cybertruck. And it comes standard. You don't have to pay to get it. It's just automatic. So that's it for the 13 features. Now I want to cover the one mystery and something you guys might already be wondering why I haven't addressed it. It has to do with those long grooves in the bottom of the bed. It's been reported that those grooves are something called T-slots. And T-slots are a mechanism used for, for building custom things with these extruded metal beams called 8020. Now, I originally also thought this was a case when I looked at them. But when I went looking for corroboration from other sources, I had a hard time documenting it. In fact, I kind of found something that led me to the opposite conclusion, or at least put me in a position where I am unconvinced that those grooves are T-slots. So y'all know that the one journalistic resource that seems to have gotten up close and personal to the Cybertruck the most are the folks over at Motor Trend Magazine. And they did two articles where they actually referenced the bed, and I'll link to both of them in the notes. But in the first deep dive talking about the bed, they didn't even mention the grooves. And in a second one where they were talking about some of the problems with the Cybertruck, they referred to the grooves as simply milled grooves. It's very hard for me to believe that a experienced auto journalist who had so much time with the Cybertruck actually failed to mention that those were T-slots. Now, the only source that I can see that actually referred to the T-slots is an original Teslarati article, the same one that I used for confirming the pass-through. But remember, I actually got a confirmation tweet from Elon about that, and so far there's been no confirmation from Tesla or anyone else that's been up close and personal with the Cybertruck to confirm those as T-slots. So for now, I'm going to say it's unconfirmed. All the other people, by the way, that have talked about the T-slots seem to actually be repeating the article from Teslarati. So if you have a better source out there, be glad to know it. There was one guy on Reddit, and I'm going to post to the Reddit link, who actually tried to make this point. I found that when I was researching for this, and I actually think the points he makes combined with the information from Mototrend point to the fact that at least for now, those probably aren't T-slots. I'm actually hoping that the upcoming episode on Jay Leno's garage where they show the Cybertruck might bring a little more details on that subject. And speaking of the Jay Leno show, I'm actually going to be hosting a live stream during that event. Now, I can't actually show the video because that's copyrighted, so you have to find your own source. But it is coming up this Wednesday, May 27th, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time on CNBC and supposedly Hulu. That's where I'm planning to stream it. So if you have time and you want some company while uh, you're watching the Leno episode, hop into the stream and, you know, we'll just see how it goes. It'll be my first time streaming, so we'll see how that goes. All right. You guys should know that the reason I did this video is because I got a couple of comments to make a deep dive video about the bed. So I do read, I try and reply, and I often get inspiration from the comments. Take a moment to put a comment below the video. And also remember, like all YouTube creators, I'm a sucker for a compliment. So if you have something nice to say, also put that in the comments. I'm still a small fish in a big pond. So if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, You'll not only make sure that you get to see the videos as they come out, but you're kind of encouraging the YouTube robot brain to recommend the videos to more people. And that's ultimately what makes this channel and more videos a sustainable proposition moving forward. So I appreciate your support. All right, we'll catch you next time. Bye.